Hey everyone, Shane Malika here with Fixia's Power Building. Thanks for joining again for another episode. Today we're going to be going over the shoulder complex, um, not just the, the anatomy, but also maybe some basic dumbbell exercises that you can put into your uh, into your routine. So what I'm going to do, I want to start off with the anatomy for this because this is a little bit different than some of the other joints that we've talked about in the past. Um, it's a little I don't want to say it's more complicated, but there's more involved um, than with some of the other joints because you have the uh, two sets of muscles, if you will, in my opinion. You have your superficial muscles, which are basically the deltoid, and then you have this underlying muscle complex called the rotator cuff. Now, the shoulder, it's one of those um, ball and socket type joints that we, we know of and everything, and that joint, our shoulder joint, has more degrees of freedom than any other joint in the body, which means it has the most mobility out there. But the thing is, when you have that much mobility, one thing you trade off is stability. So that's where you have all these muscles, all these ligaments, everything trying to provide some level of stability, all right? Also, because we have so many degrees of freedom in the shoulder, there's so much mo mobility, it puts us at risk for injury, all right? So let's take a look at some of the, mus uh, the muscles associated with the shoulder complex. If you look at uh, this particular slide in the upper uh, left-hand corner here, you do see the deltoid musculature, all right? Now, you'll, it is basically one muscle. The deltoid is one muscle. However, you will hear people while talking about the different heads of the deltoid itself, the, the uh, anterior or the front head, the lateral head, and the posterior. Now, when you do certain shoulder exercises, many of the shoulder exercises, all of the fibers are hit to one degree or another, all right, to one degree or another. However, depending on the position you put your body, your shoulder in, certain fibers will be targeted more specifically. I think you will hit everything all at once just because of the origins and insertions, but depending on the angle that you put that shoulder in or the humerus in, that'll determine which fibers are being activated to a greater extent. All right, and every, um, as far as bodybuilders go and even powerlifters, those shoulder, those deltoid muscles are extremely important uh, because of the, uh, what they do with the lifting motion. But let's not forget about the rotator cuff musculature, all right? So the rotator cuff musculature, it's made up of four different muscles. You have your supraspinatus, infraspinatus, um, ter teres minor, and then your uh, subscapularis as well. So all these muscles together make up the rotator cuff. And these muscles, depending on how we move our shoulder, will activate at different ranges of motion in order to make sure that that slide, glide, and roll of the glen uh, glenoid um, and the humerus, you know, that ball and socket joint, making sure that slide, glide, and roll is optimal. All right. Now, again, um, with this particular, uh, these particular muscles, there's a lot of susceptibility to injury because of where they are in approximation to the acromion process, the coracoid process. Sometimes they can get impinged. You'll hear that a lot, um, that you know, a person has a rotator cuff impingement or a, uh, a bursal uh, impingement or inflammation um, in the shoulder joint. So um, you know, in terms of doing specific mu muscle uh, exercises to target this, um, the rotator cuff, it's not typically what you'll find in terms of bodybuilding, powerlifting, and everything. However, one thing I do mention to people, it's important to uh, warm up the shoulder complex before going into heavier activities so that you don't cause injury and so that all these muscles, specifically the rotator cuff muscles, are activating appropriately and they're ready to go um, when you get to the heavier movements. So let's, uh, I'm going to stop sharing here and we're going to kind of get down to it right now. And I'm going to change my angle just a teeny bit um, on this. Well, again, as I mentioned before, a good thing to be doing before um, anything is rotate, um, warming up the shoulder joint because, again, all those degrees of freedom. Uh, use some light weights um, in order to do this. A good way to start off just with your bench, leaning on the bench, having the weight, letting your arm dangle, and just doing some very gentle circles, maybe 10, 15 times one direction, 10, 15 times the other direction. I know this is not the sexiest thing to be doing in a gym, but trust me, uh, but 
bad shoulder injury and it's going to take care of a lot of your workout in terms of things you'll be able to do. Doing anything for shoulders, chest, back even to a certain extent will be very difficult, if not impossible, if you have a serious shoulder injury. And if, you, if it's serious enough, where we're talking rotator cuff tears or labral tears or things like that, that could be weeks or months out of the gym, um, out of your workout regime. So again, utilizing just uh, basic small dumbbells to get things uh, operating, if you will. So I'm starting with my arms at 90 degrees. I'm just rotating back. Again, just, and usually what I'll do, this is just five pounds in each hand, a good 20 or so in each direction, get some blood flow, get things, get some of that stiffness warmed uh, out of there. Considering I'm 43 years old now at this point, I need a little bit of the warm up for the shoulders prior to getting into any heavy work. All right. So again, good ones to, uh, to be doing, or you can just take one of your mobility bands, your resistance bands, um, something I like to do as well, just taking a light one, and just kind of doing some stretching behind the back and around. Again, just to get that shoulder ready for something more difficult. All right, good. So three exercises that we can consider for the shoulder complex. One is just gonna be your standard overhead press. Pretty simple to do. It does hit all, um, all facets or all areas of the deltoid musculature. A little bit more of a target on the anterior head, depending on what position you're in. Be careful. Um, I like to use dumbbells. I found that when I use barbells, especially as I've gotten older, uh, my range of motion is a little bit different. I always felt I was getting a pinch in my left shoulder um, when I was using barbells because it Whenever you use barbells, it does or um, barbells, it does restrict your motion to a certain degree. Dumbbells, you have a little bit more freedom in terms of the uh, the motion, um, which also makes it a little bit more difficult, in my opinion. Plus, when you have a dumbbell in each hand, you can't favor one side or the other, so it's a little bit more even, in my opinion. All right. Um, so for this, you could do it standing if you want, or you could do it sitting. I prefer to do it sitting, um, not because I don't like to activate the core or anything like that, but I do like to focus on the shoulder musculature. I do other exercises in standing position to activate the core and, um, and whatnot. So for um, this, I'm going to pick up my dumbbells here. The bench I have, you notice it's not perfectly in a 90 degree position. This is a personal choice of mine. I found that when I have it in a perfect 90 degree position, again, when I try to lift the weights, I get a pinch in my shoulder, which, which is more of a pain than the discomfort you get with lifting. So what I've chosen always is to put just a slight, de um, inc de uh, set the um, bench itself back just a little bit. Now I'm still getting mainly shoulders, anterior deltoid, I know. But again, it puts me in a little bit more of a comfortable position. So bringing the dumbbells up to about the level of my ears. And then from here, I can push them straight overhead. And then bringing them back down to about the level of my ears. You notice I'm not coming all the way down because that'll put my shoulder in a compromised position. So my upper arms are about 90 degrees or parallel to the floor. And back down. And you notice I'm using that nice slow cadence, right? Two seconds up, two seconds down to maximize that time under tension. Also keeps the weights a lot lighter, which reduces my risk of injury. Now, remember when doing these, remember what your goals are. All right, that determines your sets, your reps, and how much rest you have as well. So we've talked about that in uh, previous episodes. Definitely look back at those if you forgot, depending on if you're looking for muscle hypertrophy or strength, power. Um, this exercise could be good for all of them. You'll just have to adjust the weight for, uh, for your goal so it meets that set and rep range. Another easy exercise to be doing, a little bit more of a bodybuilder exercise because it's uh, working mainly on the lateral aspect of the deltoid are classic side raises. So using these dumbbells, I like to start off with them in front of me. 
And then from there, bringing them out to the side, just to the level of the shoulder or slightly below, and then back down. And you notice I am going in a slow cadence here to reduce that risk of injury. You will see people in the gym, they will use as much body English as they can. They will swing, they will do whatever they can to get those last reps. Um, I do understand trying to challenge yourself, but when it comes to that shoulder, you are risking that injury by using momentum. So again, nice and slow and back, smooth motion. And again, when you do this, you're not gonna be using high weight, but your time under tension will be greater to make up for the lack of weight. Good. And again, it still comes down to knowing what your goals are, whether it's muscle hypertrophy or strength, power. For this particular exercise, I would recommend if you're looking for more power or strength, you may want to omit this exercise and actually do more of maybe the overhead lifts or also do a standing version of an overhead lift because using heavy weight, um, low reps for a side raise is probably a recipe for disaster. The last exercise that you can consider for your program is something working a little bit more on the posterior um, aspect, posterior fibers of the deltoid. These are often forgotten. Um, now, luckily we do utilize them quite a bit when we do back exercises, but it's nice to isolate them a little bit because they are um, really important in terms of posture. Also helps to put that, um, that ball and socket joint in a really nice position or a better position so it reduces your risk of injury. So what I'm gonna do with my bench here in order to focus on that a little bit more, I'm gonna bring it down just a little bit. I'm gonna use these same dumbbells. I'm gonna lay face down on the bench, all right, stomach down. And from here, I'm going to extend my shoulders. So I'm starting down towards the floor and I'll bring them back. And now notice what I'm doing. I'm not bringing them all the way back down. I'm keeping a short motion, each time squeezing my shoulder blades, constantly keeping the tension on the posterior delt and also that teres minor as well. All right, so those are three basic exercises you can try. Again, be safe, be cautious, use your brain. Ego lifting for shoulders is not a great idea. Um, I've seen way too many people who let their ego get involved and then they end up in a sling for four to six weeks with physical therapy. And then if physical therapy doesn't work, then they're um, with, into the surgeon's office, uh, the orthopedic surgeon's office. And I'll tell you, you wanna avoid anybody who wears a mask and carries knives, all right? So let's stay away from that. Use your head. If uh, you're doing any type of power lifting, if you're doing things for power, you know, that three to five uh, reps, those side raises, those posterior raises that we were just doing, probably are not the greatest um, exercises to be doing. However, if you're more of the bodybuilding, you just wanna get a better aesthetic shape to the shoulder, all three of those would be great, um, great things to consider. So I hope you uh, got a little bit from this video today. Thank you very much for joining. And um, you guys remember, it's all about that intensity of your workout, not the complexity of your exercises. Remember, struggle is strength. Let's get that struggle on. Let's get, let's get growing, all right? Talk to you guys.